Hi. Hello. It's been, it feels like it's been a while. It has been a long time, I believe. Yeah. So welcome viewers to the Pearl cast number, whatever this is, 40 something. We'll look it up. So this is Jill from Illinois. I'm Jan. Hello. You're a host of Pearl Together. And I'm in Wyoming. Jill's in Illinois. We're missing Lindsay. She had a conflict this evening. So schedules are hard in the summer. You know, it's just a lot. They are missing our partner in crime. But it's hard. I mean, schedules, I feel like it's hard all the time, but summer is particularly, I don't know why that is. Maybe your routine's different. My routine's not different. It's just farm work every day. It it stays lighter here longer. So I'm always yeah. surprised at how late it is. Maybe that's why. It, Maybe that's why whatever it's happened to doing you? things in the evening more. Maybe people are out doing things in the evening more than they are in the winter. Anyway, so Lindsay had a conflict and we've been messing with schedules for several weeks and we just had to go ahead so we could have a podcast this month. So we're missing Lindsay, but hopefully she'll be doing something fun. So, so hi. Hello. Lots of knitting. You have done a lot this month. I, think. I have done a lot. Well, and that's when you say it's been a while since we've podcasted, I can always tell by the number of projects that I have finished. Well, that's great because I seem to have just a lot of whips. <laughs> I still struggle with that. I have finished a couple of things I will show, but I seem to have still that issue of too many whips. And then I'm like, oh, I cast on something else. <laughs> so, well, oh, but it, I mean, is it, is that that, you know, how, um, oh, a messy desk is a sign of a something mind or whatever. Is there some correlation between the number of whips that you have going on and, and something else? <laughs> well, no, I'm thinking more about like maybe like how your creative process works. Oh yeah, maybe. Let's, let's like, go with that. I'm pretty straightforward. So I don't always have a ton of whips along because it makes me too anxious. I know. Is it the but weirdest you're creative thing? though? You're creative though. Like when we talk about planning events or planning you know, a meeting or a workshop. You're totally creative though. Except I tend to stick to the script or the pattern or the project. Like uh, you won't see oh. me take a lot of liberties with different things. Oh. And so I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, I think I'd like that better. So I'm just going to try that piece out. I tend to follow a pattern. And so I wonder if that's part of it too. Do you I'm think okay. that would be an interesting thing to find out if people who take more adventures, people who take more risks and are more adventurous in their knitting, do they tend to have more whips going on at once? I wonder. So I think viewers should leave a comment down below how you feel about that. Like, are you a pattern follower or are you a wing it kind of gal? Because if or you're you mean, more, mm. like if you're more, if you're not, if, if you're willing to take more risks, in general. Then it might not it might not bother you to take that risk. So it might not bother you to have three or four or five or six like whips just hanging out there because it just is. So do you feel like whips the more are risky? Well, maybe <laughs> feel more laid back about. I don't like to have too many whips going on. Because it feels risky to you. It makes you anxious. Where I'm like, yay, another project. Yay. <laughs> Although I will say now that I'm knitting now that, which I, I know you were teasing me about that socks are now like my fallback, like my regular knitting or, or whatever. Um, I have found that I will cast on another pair of socks. If I have a sock in an inopportune place that then I can't carry it around with me. You yeah, know what I mean? You can't like, turn the heel in the, in the takeout line. Yes. That's, you know. <laughs> but you can figure out if you've done it entirely wrong in the takeout line. I don't think I told you that story. Oh my gosh. Oh, hey, you got to back up because so Jill goes and gets her drink in the mornings on her way to work. And so you're sitting in the line of the drink place or whatever. How, how it, it, and that could be interpreted as sad or adventurous. I'm not sure which, but if the line is long, then I can get in a few. <laughs> like that. And um, I was doing my gusset decreases and I'm, and I'm doing my, you know, doing my decrease for the gusset and I knit a couple and I'm like, whoa, that's a beginning of the round marker. What, why, why did I not notice that um, beginning of round marker shouldn't be anywhere near the gusset. And I don't know if you've ever done it where you can't see the forest for the trees. Like, so then I kind of 
stepped back and I looked at it. <laughs> oh, I had, so I had, you know, here's my sock and I have this beautiful gusset. Like, well, that looks line. great. <laughs> and my other gusset was, oh gosh, yeah. it was coming out of like my heel. Like, like it was coming out of my heel, which is like, how did you not notice that? It's like somebody who, how do you not notice that? Because you're like in a out line. If you were, well, no, like, how'd you not notice it when you were knitting it? Oh, <laughs> like making a stick person with an arm somewhere where there shouldn't be an arm. Like, but we've all know. done stuff like that where you'll just be on like autopilot and you'll be watching a show and then you're like, how'd that happen? I know, I, I know exactly. I picked up all my stitches and went, oh, I need to put my other little marker there and popped on my marker and then knit on my merry way. And right. Yeah. We've all done that. I know. Yes. So we'll talk about whips and then we'll talk about what you're wearing because it's fabulous. Okay. Show us anyway first because well, people will want to know. Now, this is the Second Avenue shawl. That's lovely. Look at that Pico edge. Yeah, that was a new skill I learned with it. And then I also learned a scalloped edge. Nice. With it. Yep. So if you've been a viewer for a while yeah. I think you've seen it I was actually knitting this on the plane to the last retreat right yeah October 2019 yes wow it's been a while I mean, it has been it has been so I'll put I'll give you a link to my Ravelry yep. page yep yep yay hey I'm wearing a mountain t-shirt because like 80 degrees in my house and I'm not wearing a shawl or long sleeved but it, I'm clean, so that's a bonus because it was a hot and sweaty day here on the farm. So, oh, yeah. But you know, it's all right. Now, what I kind of exciting farm things did you do today? Nothing exciting, just regular chores. Oh, yesterday <laughs> I mowed mowed the front, but I ran over a rock, and it wasn't good because the rock like shattered and a piece of it shot out from under the mower and like stabbed me in the shin. And there was blood <laughs> and, and then I got it. It, it was a goose egg. Cause like, you don't have any like fat layer on the front of your shin. No, not in your shin. And I had on capris. And so I didn't really realize until I felt the blood running down my shin. And I'm like, Oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> and it's swelled up, you know, it's swelled up literally about a half an inch above the rest of my shin. Oh, you know, kind of about a, Ouch. All size. Ouch. Now, I would argue that if you don't live on a farm, daily farm happenings are kind of exciting. They are. We like it. See? <sighs> okay, here's another dilemma. You know how we love our goats, our Nigerian dwarf goats. Love them. Milking four right now. So I made yogurt yesterday. That's yummy. A gallon of yogurt. <laughs> wow. And goat so there's cheese. parfaits in my future this week. Oh, I love a parfait. I can eat a parfait every day for breakfast. Love it. Homemade granola, except our oven is broken at the moment. So that's a bummer. But granola, store-bought at the moment. Yogurt, frozen blueberries, little drizzle of honey along the top. It kind of gets gummy with the frozen berries because then the honey gets hard and it's like a little surprise. <laughs> yeah, I can eat that every day. It's great. Yeah. And I have a backpacking version where I freeze dried yogurt. So then I have to just add water. Oh, yeah. Not dehydrated, but actual freeze dried. Yeah. I love homemade granola. So let's see. Did yogurt. I'm going to make Chev this week. Oh, you're killing me. Yeah. How well, I have like love, three and I a half love. gallons of milk in the fridge, right? In the other fridge, the second oh, fridge right now that I need to do, you know, um, maybe mozzarella this week too. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's cheese week because I'm going to go on a backpacking trip and I'll be gone on trail for eight days. And so I got to deal with the milk. This is the thing before I go. Mm -hmm. Right. Although the kids know how to make mozzarella. They could do it. Cheese week should be a thing. <laughs> like it really should like if you were like i love cheese cheese should cheese week oh my god i know i did awesome. too so the chev you know what chev oh. is right oh yes i love let but see i get it from like sam's club and well, which i they still think that? is great they have yeah. that yeah, I, they do. I don't know i don't know yeah things. they do that's where i get it and i have it at night 
and I heat it up just a little bit so it's soft. So it and spreads. then you take like rye crisp crackers. Mm. Okay, so you just eat plain chef? Well, on right on crackers, yeah. No, I mean, but the okay. So when we make chev, I make different kinds. Like one will be like a cranberry pecan, and then one will be like toast. Chev would have like honey and cinnamon in it, and that's oh. fantastic on toast. So what I'm asking is, do you eat plain chev? Like it's just the plain, like it has a little cheese salt in it, and then you put it on cracker. I didn't even know it was a thing. Oh that yeah, you could like do oh, stuff. Yeah. With it. People make like garlic dill chev. I'm really, really like, hungry. Put some now. jalapeno. I mean, I'm not going to put jalapeno would, in it because I'm a wuss, but other people do. Okay. Now I want cheese week and I really want <laughs> We'll probably cut a lot of this up because people watch the podcast for the knitting, but. Oh, no, they would watch it for the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Leave a comment down below if you want just knitting or you want to talk about cheese week. <laughs> But I do have to carry on with knitting. So love your shawl. If people are wondering, this is the Caledonia, Amba's Caledonia shawl by Amba O'Brien. This is what we did for the mystery knit along. I should change out the mannequin here and eventually I will. But I haven't gotten around. It has a pico on the bottom too, doesn't it? It has a pico edge. It does. Yes, it does. It's a lace pico. Oh, wow. Yeah, it does. Same, same. Not hard. It wasn't hard. <laughs> And if you're, I mean, anyway, as a new knitter, whenever it's like, oh, you can do that. That's not hard. And it is hard until you try it. As long as you can, you know how to knit a knit stitch and purl a purl stitch, you can one, get there. One stitch at a time, just like it when really you're is. backpacking up a mountain and it feels insurmountable. It's just one step at a time, literally. And you will make it eventually, even if you have to stop every hundred feet. Because you're huffing and puffing. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Go backwards. Yeah. Well, I hope not to fall down the mountain, but. Well, no. Repelling would be like ripping out. Oh, dear. No way. Well. much easier. Well, it's much faster. That's the way that people feel about ripping out. So, like, oh. you go down the wrong side of a trail, you can either walk backwards or you can repel. Sometimes when you rip out those great big pieces, that's what it feels like. It does. Okay. I know you don't believe me. I think, I don't think that the analogy is <laughs> equivalent <laughs> because it's just yarn. It's not literally your bum in a web harness falling down a cliff. <sighs> True. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about whips. Let's talk about whips. Yay. Oh, okay. Should we start with socks? Sure. Okay, so on the channel, as people know, we've been doing our our toe up updated customizable toe up version. So I'm knitting the leg of this, which hopefully I'll be done with it by the time this is aired. So this is for my daughter. And then the other one is, you know, it's fraternal twin. So it's oh, gonna how be cute that is. It'll be, it'll be, it doesn't exactly match, but that's what we thought it was cool. So fraternal twins. This is uh the earth. U-R-T-H, Unique Sock Kit. I think this was color number 61. I'll put the link down below. We'll put all the links down below. I don't have to keep saying that. So that's mm. the one, that's the pair of socks I have on the needles. I have another one that's just a plain vanilla one that's like in my, I don't know where it is. Oh, I had it on the golf course. Golf course. It's in my other bag. Yeah. Isn't it nice to have multiple project bags? I know, especially when they're made by your friend Jill and they have a zipper and sheep on them. <laughs> that's my that's my sock bag. Yes. You just described my sock bag. I know, because mine's just yeah. like, except mine's blue. That's the one you sent me. Yay, it okay. is. I am just doing a plain old vanilla sock. It is a shorty. It yeah. is. Yeah. The color's pretty. Yes. So this is the one that I do knit in the line to get my drink in the morning on the way to work. So it is not a toe up because that is a new skill for me. It is a top down vanilla shorty. So 10 rows for the cuff, 10 rows for the leg because I wear short socks. Yeah. And I think in the winter, I think when I'm knitting in the winter, I will knit a longer leg, but I think for the summer, this is what I've got. And it's been fun exploring different kinds, you know, just like, do I like a... 15 round cuff. Do I like a 10 round cuff? Do I like, you know, how do I like my eggs? Which I don't and like. Eventually eggs. you'll learn different heels. 
Yes. And then maybe you'll decide you like a different heel better. I, I love the heel flap and gusset either direction. So show yours again, just for viewers. When I say either direction, so if you'll notice, viewers will notice Jill's slip stitch reinforced heel is on the back of the heel and then she's carried it around underneath a little bit. Have you? Did you carry on the slip stitch through the heel turn? No, I did not. Okay, you can, you could. Um, and then on mine, I have my heel flap on the bottom of the heel because that's where I tend to wear out, wear a hole. So the toe up socks that you see often will be, even though it's knitted toe up, it would still look like Jill's and have the heel flap on the back. But I like the heel flap itself on the bottom. The construction is exactly the same way. It's just flipped on its head. Same, same. Anyway, this is on the channel. New updated playlist. Check it out. But I... Mm -hmm. I like shorty socks too. And even in the summertime, people are like, well, I'm not going to wear wool in the summer. Wool is fantastic. Wool is, I mean, it doesn't stink. It absorbs sweat. It does not smell bad. Cotton is nasty. <laughs> really? And yeah, wool, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Wool is by nature temperature regulating. I mean, just there's a, I'm not even sure how it works, but it's fantastic and it doesn't stink. It, it doesn't stink. And this is from A Girl in Her Wool. Yep, from and Lauren. This, mm -hmm. Yes, this is July's color. Hot Club. Yes, and to start yeah. out with, it looked like this. So I'm in uh, Lauren's Sock Club as well. Lauren at A Girl in Her Wool. See the logo, A Girl in Her Wool.com. We'll put that down below. This was the July 21 Mystery Club, and this was the corresponding contrasting if you wanted to do a contrasting cuff toe or heel but jill's doing minis and you yeah you could do another pair if you wanted to using your mini for the contrasting cuff toe and heel and i'll bet you'd have enough left over of your main skein to do that i did i knit up the june color already and i weighed the socks and i weighed the ball that i have left because i have a daughter who is 11 who said hey mom i really oh. like color really like a pair of socks know. would it be cool if we had matching socks so and they don't have to be matchy matchy you could add the contrast maybe for her mm -hmm. and you, you'd have enough is the point right mm -hmm. yes 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 so the me these are although what lauren does which is super cool is you can order any size skein you could do 120 gram for the big one 150 gram for the big one and then like you know 10 gram mini 20 gram mini 30 gram mini whatever so you can mix and match your sizes in the mystery and as well as just her regular store listings anyhow check it out i like her club because it's fun and i got a notification that my august one is shipping. Oh, I'm so excited because I really love the picture she sent out for August. And that's, I've been really trying hard to get this pair done so that I'm ready for August when it arrives. Oh, you're keeping up. I know. Wow. Uh, it's summer. So. So that's exciting. So let's see, what else are you working on? Show, show, me, show me your next thing. So my neck, I, I just have two things that I'm working on, but I cannot work. I have my flax. Yay. So mm -hmm. if you have been watching, I started the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. I'm doing it in Malabrigo Rios and I am. Love it. Closer. And you did the cables instead of the pearl contrasting pearl bumps. She did cables down here. Oh, look how beautiful she did. Cables. Isn't that pretty? And that goes all the way up to show saddle shoulder, right? Yes, it goes all the way here is the neck band. Yeah. So it goes all the way up. Look how lovely. So this is a modification done by Meg Quinn. And that's it's listed on my Ravelry page. And so, right, because she had notes on her Ravelry page. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about cables. I backed up a ton. I think I ripped out once and backed up twice. So you're, yeah. that's great you're doing great and you have yeah. oh you have your progress things that's what i'm seeing there yeah yeah that's for my decrease for my decreases yeah. to, so to help me figure out but i did decide next time when i do this other sleeve i'm going when i get to where the decreases need to be i'm going to put a marker in to remind me because twice 
once that I had to rip out and another time that I had to go backwards was because I forgot a decrease. Oh, you're going to put a stitch marker on your mm -hmm. needle, needle on your cable. Yes. I see. Yep. Yeah. To help me remember. Do them. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if it will work or not, but I need yeah. to do something. So. Sure. Sure. So I'll yes. show sleeves since you're showing sleeves or yes. you have, you have like a half a sweater there. Okay. I am knitting the Strom cardigan, S-T-R-O-M by I think Rachel Hunter. Now this pattern is not readily available on, I mean, you can see it on Ravelry, but it was uh, in the Shetland Wool Week journal, which I'll show you. The Shetland Wool Week annual for 2020. So pretty. And so if you bought the annual, it's in here. And if you didn't, then you'll have to wait until it's available. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I think the year goes by and then it can be offered for sale as an independent separate pattern on Ravelry. But during that first year, you can get it. It's in the annual exclusively, I think is how that, I'm not sure. So this is the sweater. So it's a traditional fair isle sweater knitted. So you start knitting from the um, the sleeves. You do the sleeves first from the cuff up, from the bottom up, and then you knit the the sweater from the bottom up, and then you join everything together and you knit the yoke last. So all I have is sleeves at the moment. So I don't. I'm not into the pink. So I have. Whoops. That's kind of. I have my own colors that I pick. Oh, those are pretty. Yep. And Anne Frost from I Thought I Knew How, she helped me. <laughs> we were, Aww. oh yeah, we got on Zoom and I'm like, what about this one? And what about this one? She's like, no, 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 do this, this, and this. I'm like, That's fantastic. But I have, thank you. Um, I had to add a bunch of rows because I'm like an orangutan. <laughs> oh yeah. She's like knitted to 43 centimeters or desired length. I'm like, yeah, the desired length is going to be more than 40, whatever. Cause I don't like them to be, what is that called? bracelet the quarter thing. length sleeve yeah bracelet I don't I never knew that was a thing till Lindsay clued me in the other day she's like bracelet link means this and I'm like that just no oh. it's like looks like you grew out of it <laughs> okay I like a, I like a very long sleeve you'll see yeah. mine I live in Wyoming it's cold I need actual sleeves so there's my sleeves so I did, oh, really instead of progress markers like you, I just did the running piece of yarn thing. So I just take my yarn up in and out, like flip it in, flip it out, flip it in. It's just a scrap piece of, of wool. And so, you have a tutorial on that, correct? Yeah, running stitch marker. Yes. So this is, this is four in the space and it's four where the stitch is and it's four in the space and see what I mean? And that's where my decreases were every four until I got up to like here, you can see the last few rows where I'm done with my increases, not decreases, sorry, because I'm knitting up. So, and then I'm finished. And then I have 10 here, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm just marking tens as I go until I get the number of rows for the length I want. So that's nice when you're making your second sleeve, you know exactly how many you have without having to click every time. Oh yeah. Cover. You know, I'm like watching Netflix and stuff. So here's my other mm -hmm. one. See, so I know that I have you know, one, how many lines, dash lines do I have? Like, what well, was it? 11 and 11 spaces. And then I had like mm -hmm. three of the long ones and four spaces because I ended with 10. See what I mean? Right. So now I'm ready to start the ribbing, the purple for the bottom of the sweater. Oh, fun. Yeah. So this is made of uh, Jameson and Smith's two ply jumper weight. So what is, so what's jumper weight the equivalent of? Fingering. Okay. It's fingering. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Jameson Smith two-ply jumper weight is, yeah, it's fingering. Definitely. And I'm knitting it on fours, but this, okay. bloom, it blooms quite a lot. So when I block this, it'll, you know, yeah. Oh, don't you love that? Blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh. The bubbles are the best. And it blooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing I have going. The other thing I have actively going is the Mesa sweater wrap. And this, after you get through the lace, is just a is a back and forth thing, really. It's a good TV knit. 
Mm-hmm. Totally. Once you get. Oh, look at that. So this is, it's hard to see the diamond kind of lace. Oh, there it is. No, we can see it. Okay. Yeah. There. Oh, wow. Anyway, and then you have this where you can see now I'm doing a different color and I'm fading into something else. And this is interesting because it's just um, three rows of stockinette and one row of garter. See what I mean? To make that ridgy kind of. Yeah, I'm thing. thinking that my. Yeah. I'm thinking somewhere along in this one, I have that same. Yeah, I have that same thing Pattern. going on in this one. Yeah. Except. Yeah. Yeah. So this is 295 stitches across. Wow. And it was a little bit of a bugger to start because I wasn't paying attention very well. So you're <laughs> kind of going back, going forward, going back. Yeah, I had a little of that on the cast on. And the first couple of lace rows till I got, you know, kind of established. Yeah. But what's cool about this pattern is that the lace will be on this one end. So you could wear it like this with the lace and there will be armholes too and sort of sleeves but you can wear it like this with the lace or you can reverse it because the armholes are right in the center you got to check out the pattern and see the photos of and the designer is rami hill she's brilliant so you got to check that out the mesa sweater wrap so that's that's fun and there's you can i'll put a link to my specific ravelry project page so you can see the colors i chose for that so like it and yes. I, have, I actually do have one finished object, but you show your, is, you show your finished. I have, I have. Okay. So it felt like I have a lot more finished. I'm like, I have a lot of finished as I look around me going, hmm, I guess maybe not. Maybe I felt like it. The, um, easiest finish first washcloths. You know how I love a good washcloth. Yes. My mom has new curtains in her kitchen. And so. She nice. gets new washcloths to match that because because it's your mom. So yeah. six new red washcloths. One and that's the grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern. Okay. okay, it is. It is. And what I have been trying to do is trying to learn to knit without looking at my knitting. Great. And so, so that because on a dish, so so you can tell that I was learning how to do it. So there's, you know, there's a, there's a couple little things, but my mom doesn't it's care. A yarn so. over. <laughs> it's a yarn over design feature, whichever you'd like to call it. It's really, you know, like a, a code. It's more, it's a code. It's a site. It is. It is. It is. You know, knitting so. without looking is a great thing to learn how to do. I learned how to do it when we were on a trip and I didn't want to be car sick. Cause I get car sick if I'm not driving, but I wanted to knit, but if I'm not driving, I get queasy. Even if I'm sitting in the front, it happens. So that's when I learned how to knit without looking. So I could watch in the car and not look and not feel ill. Nice. That was my motivation to learn how to knit without looking. <laughs> that is, I like to knit, even if we're sitting around with, with people or with my family or something like that at the kitchen table, sometimes it feels rude to be doing this. So <laughs> I, I would like to be able to do more of this, you know, while they're talking and doing well, their and thing. And you know, you can knit in church and like still sort of act like you're paying attention. <laughs> I did knit in church today. So. Why not? <clears throat> yeah, I did. So yeah. Yeah, so I have my washcloths and then I have socks. Look, you have blockers too. Look how cute those are. Oh, and that was June's colorway, right? For the yes, this was a girl right. in her wool, the June colorway. Yeah, a girl in her wool. Isn't that socks. pretty? Yep. And this was the one where I then um weighed these and then yeah. weighed what I had left to see if I had enough. Yeah. And this is a 10 round ribbing, 10 round leg, uh -huh. and then slip and then stitch. Went into the heel flap, right? Heel flap and heel flap and gusset. Yep. Yeah. That is those. So when you're doing those, you're, you're saving your minis. And so it's fun. Then you'll have like a collection of minis you can do stuff with later if you want. And you can mix That's them up. That's what I'm thinking about. Then I'll I'll make a fun pair of striped socks or something. With, with your minis. With my minis. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So that's those. And then I finished. Yay. That's so cute. With a little pink stripe on the toes. That's great. 
I absolutely love how they turned out. So this is um, this is knit out of fiber seed. The gray is fiber seed. The white is just a cascade. Sure. Um, fingering, fingering. Rubbery yeah. page. Yep. And then the pink was left over from my find your fade. Gotcha. Right. Yep. So, and this one has a 15 row cuff and a 15 row leg. And yeah. that's what I've been thinking is so fun. I'm like, okay, I, I want it a little bit less and just to try and experiment. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The, that's a lot. You've done a lot since we last recorded. I also, yes. Yes. And I almost have a quilt finished for my. Right. I have a quilt finished too. So. And, and you're on the binding. It's like a t-shirt quilt, right? Yep. So. And you're on the binding. Yeah. You're busy. I did oh, get a lot. Just, yeah, and let's just remind you do work full time and have a family and other, uh, you know, things. Which is why I knit in the line it. <laughs> At I wherever you are. Right? Get my diet, Dr. Pepper. So, okay. yep. So those, okay. those are my finished objects for what I've got going on. So I'm not sure what I've shown before. <clears throat> so I'm just going to show them all. And if you've seen it before. I okay. was just going to say, we always like to see it again. Thanks for being patient. At some point recently, we did the crofters cap, the Shetland Woolwe cat. And so the first one I made was for my husband because he really likes these colors. And I haven't woven, woven in the ends yet because I'm a procrastinator about that, but I will. But he really likes these colors. So man, look at that. Yeah. So he, he was digging that. So I need to weave in the end. So he'll actually, but you know what? It's 90 degrees. So I'm not too concerned. <laughs> then my kids wanted this color oh look at that and i don't know if the color's showing up but it's lovely with the purples and and there is a kind of a raspberry color in here i don't think you can really see that very well that wow. kind of oh yes we can when you color. when you hold it still like yeah. that yes we can oh wow yeah wow so this one is done and I, I probably have to make another one of these colors because both the girls really like that but i do have enough yarn to do that then nice. I wanted to make the neutral colors and I haven't blocked this one yet. So it's not as smooth, but I just finished this one last night. Oh, look at that. I love the white. It pops yeah, so that, much. And, and look at this, the crown on all of these is. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. Isn't that lovely? The star. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is. Knitting is like art. And this is the crofters kept by Wilma Malcolmson. So Wilma is brilliant. I mean, her color, yeah. So this is this is Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. So is this one. This one is as well. This one is Jameson's of Shetland and their spindrift. Very similar, but it does feel slightly different. But they're it's Shetland wool. It's very similar. So definitely a good choice for Fair Isle. So wow. I need Those to block this one and then weave in ends, but you know, I procrastinate. So okay. how do you block your hats? Well, I just do, well, I have a video on that, <laughs> but you know, sink, well, warm water, blub, blub. I let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes because the yarn will bloom significantly. And then I either find like a, a bowl that's, kind of the size I want oh wow you know, okay or I don't like balloons people use balloons I don't I hate balloons I hate balloons I don't like that sound they make when you touch them that scritchy <laughs> Jana comma who hates balloons comma and pickles. <laughs> and pickles. well and they're wasteful it's just mm, and they end up out on the prairie and I mean ugh. in your farm yes yeah I don't like balloons anyhow or when I did the video for the knit along for this one, Will, he wore it dry <laughs> because he has a, he's almost six, four. He's a big guy. I didn't have the right size Tupperware or bowl. So I'm like, here, dude, and he wore it dry. <laughs> you can put it on a bowl or a balloon. You can also just take a towel stuff it with towels and set it somewhere oh i never thought about that and That's stuff it with idea. towels you can also just put it like this and try to lay it flat although it doesn't lay flat because you know it's a curvy shape. i was gonna say mine i end up just laying flat so i that's why i was asking so just stuff it with towels or find a bowl 
Or nice. if you don't have a bowl, that's now some people, if you want to block it to be more like a beret or a tam, some people will put on on a put a plate. A dinner plate. I've heard that. But I like to block first and then weave in the ends afterwards. So if it expands because it's balloon, you know, I don't keep my ends real short anyway, but you certainly wouldn't want some, you wouldn't want something to pull through. But mine are pretty, my, the ends are pretty, you know, pretty hairy. But I like the inside. I like to look at the inside too. It does. All the floats. Man. Yeah. It is. It's a work of art. That's one of my favorite things. Fair Isle is one of my favorite things. Yay. Yay. So I think that's all my whips for now. Oh, the other sock that I did get done. I have sock number two that I have in my bag, but this is sock number one. Oh. And this is just self striping yarn. It's Regia, Regia, six ply so it's more like it's a heavy fingering it's almost a light sport it's a almost a sport weight but these are thicker for me for my winter it's just a vanilla you know but it's for my winter boots nice but same kind of thing so i do the slips to this slip stitch down the back of the heel and then when i turn the heel i carry on the slip stitch reinforcement through here until I'm done with the gusset. So I have that slip stitch reinforcement along here as well on the bottom of my foot because that's where I need it. So I carry that on all the way through the turn and, and I keep doing that until I'm finished with my gusset decreases. And then I just go knit, 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 round, round. Yeah. I wear mine out like here. On the ball like on of the, my foot? On the ball of my foot is where I, I wear mine it. out. I do too. And so in theory, you could do the slip stitch reinforcement, say, you know, start it here and do that on the ball of your foot as well. And then stop when you get to the, when you begin the toe. Decrease. The toe decreases. Yeah. And I have not decided yet if it's, I haven't knit enough socks to know where my sweet spot is. So I don't know if the ones that have a hole in it are because they were so loose, oh. you know? Yeah. Or and not or and the yarn that I was using, I didn't realize only had ten percent nylon. Oh, okay, yeah. And I was loving on them, so <laughs> I'm anxious. Not anxious. I am excited to see yeah. if these are really dense. Wool is eighty twenty. Yeah. yeah, these are super dense. Mine are very very dense. I use a well. I'm knitting these on a size one and a. Half half us one and a half which is a 2.5 millimeter and this is a six ply heavy fingering so that's oh dense. so that's dense but these are going to be boot socks so there's a lot of friction it's not like wearing tennis shoes you know you're mm -hmm. slopping around in your muck boots there'll be a lot of yeah, yeah. So. love it so that's fun yeah I don't have very many whips right now, but you know, we did this huge garage sale and that's a pain and a lot of work. And no, I did not. It is a lot of work. And I did not get it rid of any yarn, but I obtained some. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how it's supposed to work. I know. You're not well, supposed to bring stuff home. But okay. We did a joint garage sale with my mother uh -huh. and she had yarn she was purging. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> What did so you bring she, home? She knitted my daughter a sweater. And so she had some leftovers from the sweater. And this is called Wonder Fluff. Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. It's like the Leta Leta Lopi. It's like very okay. loosely spun single fluff. It's almost wow. like knitting with pencil roving. You know? Oh, wow. But it made a foofy sweater. So I could make a hat or something with the wonder fluff <laughs> with the wonder fluff i brought home that yeah i brought home the leftover wonder fluff i ordered something <laughs> so my my son's birthday is coming up and he keeps dropping hints about oh i'd sure like a pair of socks and oh who, who are you knitting those socks for and It'd be awful nice to have a pair of hand knit socks. And he did, he does not have any hand knit socks. So um, 
And I was, I was debating because I want them to fit him well. So I think I'm going to give him a skein of yarn for his birthday and then knit it up into a pair of socks so I can fit it on him along uh, the way. Yeah. Yeah. Instead yeah. of knit. And so he is a huge Star Wars fan. And so um this so the the sock yarn is called This Is the Way. So it's Mandalorian. Oh, oh. that's cool. Look at those colors. That, dude? Where did yeah. you what's the brand of that? So this is I couldn't decide between this and these are not the droids you're looking for, <laughs> which was awesome. They were oranges and such. Oh wait, no, this is here we go. This is the way, and it's retold yarns Old yarns lakewood colorado okay uh-huh yep oh, and this is on her region yeah i don't know this is on her platinum sock base which is 75 percent merino 25 percent nylon nice. so for an 18 year old kid how many well, yards is that? he has big feet how many yards is that he does and that that was why i was a little bit nervous um 463 yards okay. so i may have to do i may have to get something for um heel toe and cuff yeah maybe yeah and he also wears a ton of shorty socks he doesn't wear long socks so yeah, and i don't how tall would you want the leg to be yeah and i don't anticipate that these will be socks that he puts in tennis shoes and wears out somewhere i think these will be socks that he wears with pajama pants when he's like walking around the house There's in the Saturday winter. Saturday socks. There's yes. Saturday, Sunday morning socks. Yes. Nice. Yep. Nice. So that's that. So that's what I got. That's so really I'm, cool. I am excited about that. I can't wait to get. Now, did you buy that locally or does she have a website? I at sea. Oh, okay. Right on. I, go I Googled Star Wars yarn. So <laughs> and there you found it. Yeah. And I did find another one that I thought that he probably would have liked. It was, um, oh, it was like a dark side yarn. It was right. like a dark mall yarn, but the dude, I knitting with black is a special kind of love. <laughs> so I once made my mother a lace shawl in black and it's large. Wow. But I don't remember it being that big of a deal. People say knitting a black saw, but blah, blah. But I guess I just have good lighting and progressives. I mean, I don't know. I was gonna say, were your <laughs> eyes different then? Because I'm not sure that mm -hmm. these eyes would. Um, it might have been before progressive. Yeah, I think it was before I got progressive. Because when my daughter turned 10, it seemed like as soon as she turned 10, I got progressives. <laughs> I was 45 when I got pro progressives. But I wore glasses before then. But not as much of a shifty business, you know? <laughs> shifty business. I don't know. Yeah. I was somewhere between, I wonder if I was like 42, somewhere between 42 and 46. 45. I probably should have had him earlier than that. But I, I know it was all the, I know I'm like that. that and I, I know, <laughs> I know. And that's how I could always tell if I needed new glasses is because I couldn't see my knitting. Be like, uh huh. Oh, like when, I, when I started missing, messing up stitches, I knew that I needed to yeah. go get my eyes checked. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Oh, and I do want to show you something else. So one of my knitterly friends, um, tin can nets on their on the for the flax, they they have provided a lace section. Wow. Look at that. That's lovely. They that did that for you. I don't know, but I did print it off. It, it was on Tin Can Knit's Instagram page. My printer then ran out of ink, so that's not yeah. it, but you can see it a little bit better. Look at that. That's lovely. So they, so you go to the Instagram and you hit that link and they give you that lace pattern. Right. I thought, oh, right. that's kind of cool. So how many days ago was that? How long ago did you see that? I mean, people can Only see. Well, a mm -hmm. couple of days. Okay. Only about a link, oh, a link ago, a week ago. So by the time this airs, you may have to scroll back like two weeks by the time this airs. So, mm -hmm. but you can find the pink lacy flax, just scroll Tin Can Knits Instagram account. Yep. And I think it takes you to maybe their blog. <clears throat> well, I'll find so it. I'll find, find the it. link. I'll, I'll find the link. We'll put it down okay. below. Yep. So that's hey. it. We're busy. We've been busy. I know. I know. All, so many plans. Oh, I do have another acquisition. Oh, what do you have? 
And I can't really say what I'm going to do with it yet because it's, I can't talk about it yet, but I can show you the yarn. Yes. Oh, I love a good tonal. Yes. I do. I love a good tonal. Hazelnuts. That's pretty. And you know, I love me some purple. Yes. What is it made up of? It is, as predicted, merino. This is her artisan sock, hand dyed fingering weight yarn, 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. This will not be okay. socks. I can't talk no. about it yet, but it is. it will not be socks, um, which is fine, but it's good for socks. I don't know. I think the slip stitch reinforcement does a lot. I mean, people think that your sock yarn has to have nylon. And I think that's a fine idea if that's your thing. But a lot of people are trying to reduce their consumption and consumerism around nylons and plastics and artificial, you know, not natural fibers. In the whole course of human history, people have been knitting socks long before plastic was ever invented. So wool is fine. I mean, the slip stitch reinforcement helps a lot. It really does. And then there's a way to darn. I mean, if you get a hole, you fix it. Yeah. So you see what I mean? Yes. That's my saying, next, next up on my list. Yeah. I have I mean, two socks that need a little bit of love. I have a video for that. I do appreciate a little nylon. I do, but I know that some people don't want to do that. So I'm just saying there's options. Um, anyway, this is fantastic. This colorway is called Iris. It's pretty. This is her artisan sock, but she has some like fancy schmancy sock. I think there's one called Entice and it's like, you know, Merino cashmere nylon. Uh -huh. and... Yay. So fun things coming up that I can't talk about. <laughs> so yeah, it's all right. We'll keep knitting our socks in the meantime. I know I can give my mom her washcloths. <laughs> They've been done, but I've had them in this little basket until we podcasted. So now she can have her washcloths. You and now I can wear my socks. I haven't worn these. And I haven't worn these either because if my floor is dirty, I really didn't want to show a, a, a heel <laughs> dirty sock on a podcast. So, so now I'm you super can excited. Wear socks because you showed everyone. Now you can wear them and your mother can have her, her gift. To I mother. know. That's yes. funny. Yeah. Yay. Now they can go out in the world and be enjoyed. Yes. Do their, do their job. Keep my toes warm. I'm excited. Thanks for joining me. Yay. Thanks for having me. It was fun. fun. All right. Until next time. Happy knitting. Okay. Happy knitting, everybody. Bye.